If you've ever found mascara smudged on your brow bone or under your eye when you took a quick glance in the mirror during or at the end of your day, or your eyeliner transferred up into your crease or smeared somewhere around your eye it's not supposed to be, or faded, this video is for you. It's so frustrating to spend time applying your makeup only to have these things happen. They used to happen to me too until I started implementing the tips I'm gonna share with you in this video into my makeup routine regularly throughout the years. So no matter what the reason is, why these smudging and fading issues are happening to you, these tips will keep your eyeliner and mascara looking fresh all day long. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. I'm covering a bit of everything in this video. There are tips within tips and then more tips some options for you to choose from based on your makeup preferences because tips are going to vary depending on what type of makeup you prefer, cream eyeshadow versus powder, the type of eyeliner you like to wear, things like that. You'll see as we go along. So let's go ahead and get started. About half of these tips, the ones I'm sharing first, are helpful for both eyeliner and mascara. They're combo tips, I guess. And the other half are eyeliner focused. This video was originally going to be eyeliner only, but once I started putting it together, I realized a lot of these tips were very helpful for mascara too, so here we are. And you'll see clips throughout of me using different eyeliner formulas, and I'll be talking about eyeliner formulas later in the video. Okay, my first tip that's helpful for both eyeliner and mascara is to apply an eyeshadow primer, even if you're not wearing eyeshadow. I know no one ever talks about this, but it's so helpful, along with a few extra things that follow, for keeping your mascara and eyeliner where they're supposed to be. So even if you're only wearing mascara or eyeliner and mascara, apply a tiny amount, that's all you need for both eyes, of eyeshadow primer from your lash line to your brow bone, extending it as far out as you'll be placing eyeshadow or eyeliner. Now all eyeshadow primers are not created equally. I'll have a few here on screen that I enjoy. I'll also have them listed and linked down below for you along with everything else I'm sharing in today's video. You can even apply a thin, thin layer of concealer if you prefer to do that. Whatever you use, whether it's eyeshadow primer or concealer, let it set for 30 to 60 seconds before you start moving around and blinking and creasing it up. You can either close your eyes fully or just tilt your head back a little bit so that your lids are extended and not all creased up, whatever works for you. Now this next one is pretty important and a lot of people skip it and then wonder why they're having issues and this could be a big reason why. We're expanding on the primer application we just did. Again, it doesn't matter if you're wearing eyeshadow or not. You want to set that primer with translucent powder. Yes, even if you have dry, textured, or mature skin, there are very sophisticated, sheer, blurring, smoothing powders on the market geared for your skin type now. Powders today are not what they were, and setting with eyeshadow does not accomplish the same thing. It's like with our face. You set your foundation with some kind of powder to lock everything in, and this is the same concept. Just to show you on me, I used two very good primers that I wear regularly on each eye without setting them. And within a few hours, I had smudging and wearing away. And that doesn't happen if I set with setting powder. Setting your primer not only keeps your eyeliner from fading, but if you have hooded or deep set eyes, it can keep that eyeliner from transferring and smearing up into your crease or the fold of your lid. And it can also keep your mascara from smudging on your brow bone. And if you're wearing eyeshadow, it will help your eyeshadow apply smoothly, not crease and look fresh all day. Now there are two different methods to do this depending on the type of eyeshadow you're wearing. If you're wearing a powder shadow or no shadow at all, just go ahead and dust a small amount of translucent powder from your lashes to your brow bone. And if you're wearing a cream or liquid shadow or a shimmer or metallic powder shadow you really want to pop, you can go ahead and apply it first and even your eyeliner too if you want and blend them up into your crease. Apply them however you normally would and then dust translucent powder from your crease up to your brow bone. 
let's talk about our under eyes, the lower lash line area. This is a hot spot for a lot of people. So if you have mature skin or dry under eyes like I do, you probably use some kind of hydrating daytime eye cream, eye treatment, maybe even a prep step before you apply your makeup, which can increase the chances of smudging, transferring, and fading of our eye products. I'm not going to tell you to stop doing that because I know I need these types of eye creams during the day and you probably do too. But I am going to give you a couple of options that will help when it comes to smudging and transferring under the eye. Even waterproof mascara and eyeliner will be attracted to a creamy moisturized under eye area, even if it's set with setting spray. So if after you conceal your under eyes, you're not setting your lash line beneath your lashes, you don't have to set your entire under eye area if you don't want to. With some kind of sheer translucent powder, this is most likely why you're experiencing fading or transfer during the day. All you need to do to set in the this localized manner is to take a small flat brush and work it into the powder and then press it to the lash line underneath your lashes if you don't want to set your entire under eye area. And if you have eyeliner on, you'll just set right over that eyeliner. Don't worry, these powders are updated. They're not made like they used to be. They're not cakey. They're very sheer and undetectable, especially the ones that are made more for the under eye area. I'll have my favorites listed down below that don't look like powder or exaggerate dryness or fine lines. But because you're doing this in such a localized way, it's pretty much a non-issue. Now, I personally set my entire under eye area with a very sheer beautiful powder. This is a way for you to go all in. I start by dusting a minimum amount under my eye and out by my crow's feet area and then I take a sponge or a poof and press it into my more crease prone areas my lash line and my crow's feet to really press and fuse the powder into my skin. The simple act of setting your under eye can go a long way when it comes to your mascara and eyeliner smudging or transferring under your eyes. For extra stay put insurance, or if you're particularly oily, this will really bulletproof your eyeliner and mascara even further once your makeup, your eye makeup is fully complete. Now, even if you wear long wearing or water resistant formulas, this will give you double insurance because powders set creams, or in one case, powder can set powder. So if you lined with eyeshadow, I love lining with eyeshadow. I do it frequently and find it stays just fine because I implement these other tips. But if you want a little extra insurance, just pat a small amount of sheer translucent powder on a small brush over that line. And you can also take it along the lower lash line. This avoids adding any more pigment. Now, if you use other types of eyeliner, pencil, gel, liquid liner, you can do that same thing, or you can smudge over it with a coordinating eyeshadow to give a bit of smokiness to your look, which is incredibly flattering in my opinion in general, but especially if you have hooded or mature eyes, it's just a really pretty, some more sultry look. Plus it softens any hard edges or mistakes you may have made. And if you wanna take that further, if you wanna ensure what you just did with the shadow, go ahead and tap over that with your sheer translucent powder. You'll have triple insurance. Now take that same translucent powder and dust a tiny, tiny bit along the very tips of your top and bottom lashes. If you can see this powder when you applied it, you applied a little bit too much. Just take a clean brush and lightly dust off anything you can see. This small step is pretty huge for preventing your mascara from smudging. If you've ever curled your eyelashes and found some eyeliner was missing or faded away, transferred away when you removed your curler, this will hopefully help you. It's helped me. So I found curling my lashes before applying any eyeshadow or eyeliner prevents that. And if I lose any curl in the process of applying my makeup, all that's required is a very light touch up curl right before applying mascara, which avoids the lifting eyeliner transfer issue. I forget sometimes and I end up doing it the way I've always done it if I'm time crunched or something, but it's so much better this way and it was just a small change. 
Another advantage to curling your lashes before applying any eye makeup is that you may find you have better access to your lash line if you enjoy tight lining. Tight lining is basically darkening the root of your lashes to make your lashes look thicker. I always recommend tight lining versus lining the waterline, which is the fleshy part between your lash line and your eyeball. When it comes to tight lining, instead of using a pencil directly on your lash line, try using a slim flat or angled brush no matter if you're lining with pencil or eyeshadow and yes eyeshadow will stay and not run or smudge with this method there are three reasons why this works so well the first is that it's a lot slimmer than the rounded tip of a pencil even at its sharpest. So it easily, firmly, and precisely presses liner directly into the lash line without it accidentally getting into the waterline at the same time where it's more prone to smudging or watering away. And if you have sensitive eyes like I do and you've always had a little bit of difficulty with a pencil tickling your eyes, this will feel a lot more comfortable. I don't even have to pull or hold my lid up to access my lash line like I did with the pencil when I use a brush. It also makes for a much quicker application because it covers more of the lash line at once due to the width of the brush. I'll have several options linked down below for you. All you do is swipe your brush into the pencil or shadow, whatever you're using, and you can approach your lash line from the top, from the bottom, or head on, whatever works best for you. Even a combination is sometimes what I go with. And press, wiggle it into your lash line until you're done. Okay, let's talk about lining the waterline, that fleshy part between our eyelashes and our eyeball. I have a couple of tips for you, but I do need to say a couple of things first. I feel very passionately about because I was in eye care for several years dealing with glaucoma and dry eye and saw some things. I made an entire video about lining the waterline several years ago, but it's been a while, but my feelings have not changed. So the reason why your eye makeup doesn't want to stay on this area is because your water line was not made for makeup. When you put eyeliner on the waterline, you're covering very important glands that keep the tear film on your eye from evaporating. They work hard to secrete oil to keep your eyes lubricated. And this oil that's secreted is, is why product does not want to stay there. So if you're coating these meibomian glands, that's what they're called frequently, over time they can start to dry out and eventually shut down and die and lead to really irritating and sometimes extreme extremely painful dry eye conditions. I hear so many women talking about how they have watery eyes, which is a huge symptom of dry eye. We're already prone to getting dry eye the older we get and adding this to the mix is not gonna help it. So I'm pretty against lining your waterline on a regular basis. Okay, so I'm off my waterline soapbox. It's just how I feel. I have to get it out there because not everybody knows, you know? Now I get there might be occasions where you want to line your waterline. It's a special occasion. I mean, I do that too. I said it earlier. I'll address this a little bit further when I talk about eyeliner formulas here in a second. But if you have watery eyes and you're wanting to line your waterline, I recommend skipping the area around your tear duct, the inner third or fourth of your eye to minimize running and smearing. Actually, if you have watery eyes or allergies that are making your eyes watery, I wouldn't do any sort of eyeliner around that same area, that inner third, inner fourth. I know that may not be what you want to hear, but that's going to look a lot better than smeared runny eyeliner at the corner of your eye. Let's talk about eyeliner formula really quickly because that could be part of your issue. I have a few options I prefer over others personally for a few reasons. Now, if you've been using coal eyeliner and you're wondering why your eyeliner is smudging, it's because it's coal. Coal eyeliner smudges. It's probably not the best option for a stay all day budge proof eyeliner. Now liquid liner is pretty long wearing overall. Now obviously there are going to be good products and bad products. Just the overall general category, it's pretty long wearing. But if it gets wet around your lash line, for instance, there could be issues. So I definitely wouldn't line your waterline with it or tight line or put it anywhere near your tear duct if you have watery eyes. For the most part, you want to stick to long wear, waterproof, water resistant, 
eyeliner formulas, pencils, gels, even eyeshadow. There are very creamy, blendable, budge-proof, waterproof formulas that give you plenty of time to work with them to smudge them and smoke them out before they fully set down. Now, if you've tried some and you're still experiencing fading or smudging, it may be because you haven't been implementing some of the tips or techniques that we talked about today. So before you ditch the liner, try those first. It may be fine after that. I find lining with eyeshadow works exceptionally well in general, especially under the lower lash line, and it looks softer than other types of liners. Even if I'm using other liners for my upper lid or my lash line, I find shadow to wear really well under my eye. I line my eyes with eyeshadow probably 80% of the time, and I'm often asked how I get it to stay on all day without fading, and my answer is, what I showed you in this video. I don't do anything that I did not just show you today. And actually, most times when it comes to lining with eyeshadow, all I need to do is apply eyeshadow primer, let it set, and set it with translucent powder. You can take all of these steps or a few or one, but they're here for you if you need them, and I hope you find them helpful for keeping your mascara and eyeliner where they're supposed to be and preventing them from fading, smudging, and migrating during the day. Let me know if you have any questions down below or if you want me to tackle any other topics. I've done several videos on challenging eyes. If you want to check those out, they're here for you. I would really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up, if it helped you in any way, and subscribe if you enjoy everyday beauty made easy because that's what my channel is all about. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye!